All right, so it's Friday, which means it's time for the next episode of Truly Terrible. Uh, this episode is obviously brought to you by my Patreon, where, uh, real quick before I get into it, I'm doing the first uh, $20 plus patron Skype chat thing this uh, this Saturday. I sent out a Patreon message. I've only got, like, I think there's nine of you total, and only six or maybe seven have gotten back to me. So if you just haven't been on the computer and this is the first you're hearing of it, then I'm trying to get out to you, so just check your Patreon inbox and uh, reach out to me with the way I told you to, and hopefully we'll get all that squared away, because I want that to go well and be fun, and I don't have anything planned. I'm planning on just shooting the shit with you guys, so hopefully it works out okay. Um, I don't imagine that it won't, like, just doing exactly what I'm doing right now, except with other people. If anything, it'll be easier, because I'm not talking by myself for a fucking hour. Um, all right, so the Patreon, of course. If you support that, I really appreciate it. If you can't afford to, that's totally fine. I understand. There's more important shit to donate to. You could, for like the amount it takes to talk to me once a month, with, uh, well, you get a lot of other benefits too, but the 20 bucks a month thing, you could feed like 80, 80 hungry kids in Somalia or whatever. So really, really, I'm kind of a piece of shit asking you to do that, right? Does that, does that work out? Does the math work out? Who knows? Um, all right, so. I was going to be sponsored by a company this week called uh, the Ethiopia Cleanse Diet. Uh, I did a lot of research into it. They were asking you to drop off sugar, carbs, fat, protein, uh, and drink nothing but, uh, I guess, dysentery-riddled water for you know your entire life. And you lose a lot of weight, but I looked up the health ramifications, and it's just not very good for you. So I, I decided to steer away from them and go with a, a very reputable and good sponsor, uh, in all seriousness, my first actual sponsor on this podcast, which is neat. So I'll get into reading that right now. And a real copy, one that doesn't come up with me making fun of stupid shit. So, the company is Vapolabs. Mmm, delightful. Refreshing, thick, and cloudy vapor. That's right, I said it, vapor. Tired of your old e-liquid? Are you just done with dull-tasting, harsh-hitting vapor juice for your e-cig? Well then, it's time for you to try Vapolabs. Vapolabs e-cig juice is smooth with specifically designed flavors, to, play, flavor profiles to tickle your taste buds. Try the new Hippo Milk. It's a sweet strawberry milk with a creamy exhale for a decadent all-day vape. Or our Nuka Crunch. That sounds like Fallout 4 themed. Or just Fallout themed, not necessarily 4, whatever. Or our Nuka Crunch, a sweetened 90s breakfast cereal swimming in ice-cold milk for that nostalgic crunch. No matter what flavor you decide on, that you are they're all eligible for Juice Rewards. Juice Rewards is an innovative program, a rewards program at Vapo Labs. Just buy a few bottles, then get a bottle free. It's that easy. So go ahead and pick up a bottle of e-juice from the only company that will give you free stuff. Vapo Labs Science. B asterisk plus sign cent sign pound exclamation point. Uh, please use responsibly. Must be 18 or older to use this product. California Proposition 65. This product contains nicotine. Uh, also, don't forget, uh, for a limited time, maybe it's limited time, who fucking knows? I made that up. Uh, don't forget, use the code MURKA25, M-U-R-K-A 25, just 25, for 25% off your first order. Only at vapolabs.com. That's V-A-P-E-O-L-A-B-S dot com. All right. So thank you very much, Vapo Labs. They actually sent me a lot of really nice shit. So they sent me five uh, of those like eyedropper-looking things full of e-cig juice, and it, it's really good. They got a lot of interesting flavors. Um, I honestly, they're like I haven't even used it enough to try all of them. The first one I used, the Nuka Crunch. That's my favorite so far. I used the Hippo Milk as well. It's good, but the Nuka Crunch is the best so far, and the Key Lime Pie one is good. Haven't tried pumpkin yet, pumpkin pie. Uh, Rad Nanner, I guess some kind of uh, really righteous banana. Um, haven't tried that yet, but yeah, all the ones I've tried are excellent, so please check them out. It is my first sponsor that I've had on this show, so let's set a good precedent. If you guys do enjoy using e-cigs and whatnot, please give them your business. They've been easy to work with, really nice contact guy, and uh, they also sent me a really nice e-cig that is like... I didn't realize how much of a, a pauper I had been with my old e-cig. Like, I figured, oh, I just get the the pen top or whatever, uh, where it kind of looks like a pen, and then you, you suck it into your mouth like a cigar, and then you inhale it from your mouth, you know? This one they sent me is like you breathe into it like you're inhaling from a, 
a snorkel where it's like you're <gasps> inhaling straight from it, and it's really, really fucking nice. Way nicer than anything I've ever used. So big ups to them. Thank you very much, and please go check them out. All relevant links are below. And yeah, that's that's fucking it for now. We'll hear more about them later. So I was looking at shit to uh, and uh, the Ethiopian cleanse. That's not a real diet. I made that up. So don't uh, actually forego fat, protein, carbs, and sugar to try and lose weight because you will lose a lot of weight quickly but you don't get like that ab look that you're going to be looking for like the guys in 300 you get that like bloated semicircle starving kid look and that's not a good look nobody wants that um yeah i was looking at fucking stories for talking about today i'll get to fallout and black ops 3 talk in a bit because uh I don't know, usually I'd never really talked about the actual video games that much when I made content, but this time, like, I, I actually like both of these games. They're both really cool. Um, I, Black Ops 3 is impressing me so much more than I thought it would. I thought it was going to be, you know, incredibly disappointing, but I guess, as with every Treyarch game, it's just better than the other one. So it's really only every other year that I get excited. Um, yeah, so a couple of things. The main thing I wanted to talk about real quick was... I. I talked about it briefly, maybe not even that briefly, on uh, PKA is the the whole Mizzou thing that's been going on. So for those of you in the UK or whoever who don't know what's going on, Mizzou, it's uh, University of Missouri in Columbia, and since I'm from Missouri, it's been on the news and a little bit more of a hullabaloo here than other places, I'm sure. I'm sure nobody in London gives two fucks. So basically, uh, the chancellor and the president of the university had to step down because of uh, racial issues. Um, basically, a dude started a hunger strike saying, hey, I'm not going to fucking eat until this guy steps down. And the reason being is because, uh, you know, this uh, Missouri Student Association representative, the president of that student association, said that a bunch of uh, good old boys were driving around in a truck and yelling the N-word at them and being racist on this com college campus. And so that's unacceptable. And you were you were inactive, President. You should have been more active in, in preventing things like that. So I'm not going to eat until you step down. And this uh, student uh, president, uh, student, I don't even know the name of the, the fucking thing, but the student president, uh, not, not a student, a guy who works for the student association, that president, uh, said that a bunch of racists drove by and yelled the n-word at him as well as other things and uh as soon as he tweeted that that it had been you know yelled at him suddenly a ton of other students started tweeting yeah yeah i've seen this this truck this racist brigade of of hooligans driving around yelling epithets at everyone and oddly enough no evidence of it no video recording no nothing nothing at all um, then that same person decided to say, oh, there's also, you know, nothing's happening, even though there are KKK rallies. There's, there's a meeting of the Ku Klux, Ku Klux Klan on the University of Missouri-Columbia campus right now, and nobody's doing, any, doing anything to get rid of them. Once again, no evidence there. Um, actually, the Missouri Student Association president, the guy who tweeted about the, the racist truck guys and then the KKK being there, he actually had to come out a couple days ago and say, oh, yeah, I actually, I made that up. That's not real. Um, but by that point, the president and the chancellor of the university had already stepped down um, because, you know, you, you have to abide by that because the football team uh, already said, like, oh, we're not even going to play against BYU this next week unless the president steps down. And, of course, the university board or whatever is going to be like, all right, well, fuck you, sorry. I, I don't, we don't really care if you made it up, but we can't afford to lose out on all this money from not having our football team play. So, really, it was just a big convoluted lie uh, culminating in two people having to quit uh, because of false allegations and just nonsense, just, just flagrantly made-up shit. Uh, the hunger strike guy family is worth like 20 million dollars so if anything he's the most quote privileged of the people who go to that school like he's probably in the top zero 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 one percent of family wealth uh, of people that go there so that's just a big fucking farce and kind of douchey of him to do um uh that that teacher that you probably saw that clip online where they were having the big protest in the middle of uh, right by the business school and the this communications teacher was yelling at a student who works for the Maneater, and the Maneater is uh, Mizzou's uh, 
it's it's their newspaper there. It's their like uh, news journal, and Mizzou is arguably the number one news uh, journalism school rather in the nation, and so they take that shit seriously. And you can't tell a student who goes to a public university who's working on like that's his job, that's his class, he's doing that for his degree. Uh, if he's going around trying to get information on something, you can't just stop him and say, oh, no, you're not allowed on this part of campus. You can't do that. That's not allowed. It's a public campus. He pays to go there. He can walk wherever the fuck he damn well pleases. Like, he can't just go, you know, set up a picnic in the women's locker room or restroom and hope for the best, But because that's just kind of creepy and also illegal in one way or two. But you can walk around on the campus. That's fucking horseshit to say that you shouldn't be able to, and even more horseshit coming from a teacher like that's that's nonsense. A communications teacher, no less. Like, what the fuck are you? You have no authority here by the by the J school. Um, I don't know. It's just nonsense. And she was yelling. I tried to swat the camera out of the guy's hand. And then, upon realizing that she wasn't going to be able to get rid of that guy on her own, she yelled over to the people around her. Said, "Hey, we need some muscle over here. This guy won't leave. This reporter won't leave." So actively inciting violence against someone who's a student there as a teacher. That's like. She's just a real bitch. Like, the fuck? She she apologized for it, but at that point, it's more of just a maintenance apology, not like she actually felt bad, because you can see this crazy lady was uh, just beyond the pale, on the wrong side of this, 100% of the way through. And so, at least the internet had the right response to that and, and got her fired. I think she had to step down, hopefully. Um, yeah, the whole thing's just been a shit show of race baiting and PC nonsense, where even after... It came out that it was all horse shit and that it was made up and fabricated. The evidence wasn't real. The guy who did the hunger strike claimed that he was hit by the university president's car and was tweeting, making a big deal about it, saying like, oh, four days since I got hit by the car and still no justice for me. Uh, the video got leaked of him being quote-unquote hit by the car. Uh, when reality, the president was trying to get his car around this group of protesters in the middle of the road, and as he was inching forward at about 60 feet an hour, uh, the guy just ran up and like bumped into the car. He hit the car at a higher velocity than the car was traveling. Like he ran into it. You know, like it doesn't it it doesn't make any sense. It, it was a clear fabrication and a lie. But uh, of course, because of PC culture, which I can't wait till there's a South Park made on this, because they will do it. Uh, you have to believe everything that they say outright, otherwise you'll be critiqued as a racist or a bigot or, you know, a backwards bumpkin hick. Like, you can't, God forbid, you ask for evidence or, uh, it's 2015. There's no fucking way that the KKK could set up anywhere in this country without someone getting footage of it, much less a college campus with 35,000 smartphone-wielding students. It's just nonsense, and the fact that you can use this horseshit to get two professionals to step down their livelihoods ruined all on fa false allegations and nonsense it's like it's kind of scary you know like what what's next like when when will this pendulum swing back the other way so that like people are less or i guess the media is less likely to just pick up on anything that's uh divisive about you know any kind of quote ism and when will they actually go back to being like, hey, you know what, the evidence really isn't really there. Like, if this were true, it would be an outrage, but it's not. So we're just going to kind of let it go instead of, you know, making a mountain out of a molehill, so to speak. It's just aggravating to look at. And I guess it's closer to me because I'm from Missouri. Uh, so it's it's here and it's bigger on the news to other people in other countries. doesn't fucking matter. But it's just annoying that so much outrage can come over nothing, and then by the time all the truth comes out, the damage is done and the media cycle has moved on to the next just nonsense. Uh, it's just, it, I just fucking hate it. It's stupid. It's really, really fucking annoying. Um, anyway, that's enough about that. I, I talked about it on PKA some, but I didn't get into all the nitty-gritty details. Um, anywho, whatever. Um... As I, I was looking in more uplifting news, in a, in a strike for equality, I saw that women have overtaken men for obesity in the U.S. So that's excellent. Um, you know, I, I say, I say, don't stop until you've doubled men. Show them that you can eat twice as much, twice as fast. Like, you know, girl power. So, in all seriousness, this this obesity thing is getting out of control. Um, there's nothing to do about it though. Like, there's so many little clips and. Uh, Things on magazine covers of diets you can do, of little one-trick pony things, like uh, just like I said, the Ethiopia diet, the Ethiopian cleanse, rather, where you can just forego all food and only drink dysentery-infected water, and you'll lose a ton of weight, but it's just not healthy. And I don't even think it's because of 
genetically modified foods or maybe genetically modified is the wrong word because GMO just means like they're going to be like corn that's GMO and that's not going to kill you. Uh, I guess like processed food is what I'm talking about. Like even I don't think it's processed food as much as just it's, I think it all comes down to portion sizes, but I think that's so simple that most people think that there has to be some nefarious chemical that makes you fat in all of our food, which I guess that is processed food to an extent, like it is more calorie dense and will make you gain more weight. But if you eat a reasonable amount of that food, you're not going to gain a ton of weight, you know? Like, you can eat McDonald's. There was that, uh, that Super Size Me thing, that backlash to that where the dude made his own Super Size Me and was like, hey, I'm going to eat McDonald's every day for three months and lose weight. And then he did it, and he was kind of like, hey, see this? I ate nothing but shit-tier processed McDonald's for like three months or two months or however long it was, and I lost 25 or 30 pounds because it's all about portion sizes and you know, portion control. Um, which, you know, that's... I, I'm sure he wasn't like the the picture of health at the end of that because at the end of the day unless he was eating all those horseshit McDonald's salads that probably only have iceberg lettuce in there anyway and weird little mutant tomatoes with no vitamins. Uh, he probably wasn't getting the vitamins he needed, but at least he was healthier than he was before. Like, you're probably healthier being a normal weight, eating fast food every day, than you are being obese and just getting obese by eating like, oh, I only eat uh, soy chips and gluten-free chicken wings and uh oh i only drink kale smoothies mixed with uh the the finest stevia or whatever those artificial sweeteners are so i don't know if you're a nutritionist or a dietitian one of those is, is bullshit the other one it means you have to be certified i don't know which one is which but if you're a certified nutritionist or dietitian and you know that answer let me know because i'd be interested to find out if you actually are healthier being obese on all natural foods than being normal weight on fast food because I don't know that that'd be a challenge to get obese if like all you were eating was fruits vegetables and like lean meats you know you'd have to eat so much fucking romaine lettuce to gain weight like to the point of vomiting every day because you packed your one stomach with as much leafy greens as it takes to fill up a cow um, probably very regular shits though very regular like clockwork um, the fuck was I talking? Where did this come from? Oh, yeah, the obesity thing. Uh, I also saw there was some Starbucks shit going on online. I saw it trending on Twitter, and then I Googled it briefly to see what was going on. And apparently people are pissy about Starbucks new cups. They do like a... I don't drink Starbucks. Um, not as some sort of like, oh, I'm, I prefer, you know, quality coffee made by a liberal arts student dropout. No, I just don't drink coffee very much. I had coffee this morning, or Melissa made me some coffee today, and I still feel jittery from it because I don't drink coffee, and that amount of caffeine just, like, almost makes, like, my eyes feel like I'm looking all over the place like a crazy person. Um, maybe I'm even talking faster than usual right now because I, I can't even tell. I just feel wired. Um, yeah, and I'm so scatterbrained. It's fucking coffee. How do people do this every day? Uh, yeah, so this war on Christmas that people were claiming, I watched some dude's video, um, Feuerstein or something, this, like, really popular conservative Christian guy who, and I didn't watch the whole video because it's just cringy and awful and just, just so, so convoluted and made up of outrage. It's like the conservative equivalent of the liberal complaints of, uh, making a mountain out of a molehill. Like, liberals do their own thing with being offended by any number of isms, and then conservatives do their thing where they make believe that, like, oh my god, Christians are so persecuted in this country. Like, look at this new Starbucks cup, you know? It's does, it doesn't even say Jesus is our Lord on it. Like, it, it, it's not an outrage. There is no war on Christmas. Like, th there's not. There's no war on Christmas. You can say, like, I think the guy claimed, like, oh, Starbucks employees can't even say Merry Christmas to, to customers. They absolutely fucking can. Who's going to give a shit? Like, what kind of monumental prick do you actually have to be that if someone says, oh, Merry Christmas to you, you're going to be like, oh, God isn't real, you faggot. You, you, I can't believe you're so dumb that you believe in Jesus. Ah, oh, you fuck you. Like, nobody actually cares that much. That's like... I don't know, I guess if you're like one of those hardcore, just figured out that religion isn't real atheists who is offended by everything, like if you're one of those people who's like, you should take God off of our money, it's like, 
Yeah, I guess, like, they didn't add In God We Trust or whatever until the 50s or something. But even then, like, do you really care? Do you read your money? Like, before you go and purchase a good, or is the guy at the counter at McDonald's like, that'll be four ninety seven, And you're like, all right, here's $1 in God We Trust. Here's $2 in God We Trust. Here's $3 in God We Trust. And here's $4 in God We Trust. And... I know that, you know, I, me using this money is a tacit admission that I also trust in God. Blah, 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 blah. Like, nobody, nobody fucking thinks that. It's just a, a made-up reason to be outraged. It shouldn't matter. But, yeah, that's like a good example of the conservative fake outrage to the liberal fake outrage. Although, it seems like there is a lot more liberal fake outrage than conservative fake outrage. But that could just be confirmation bias uh, because there are... Like, Fox News has a lot of fake outrage shit where they make up that, like, oh, they're going to start implementing uh, eighth trimester abortions where you can kill your three-year-old with no repercussion, uh, which everybody knows will never happen. But when the liberals do it, there are so many more, like, liberal sites and liberal outlets that even if it's the same number of aggregate outrages, it seems like way more because everybody is promoting it. So that's probably it. That, That makes more sense. Because uh, both sides are guilty of their stupid shit, obviously. Um, what the hell else? Is oh, so I went to a concert. So it was Melissa's birthday recently. And I went to a concert recently, uh, just a couple days ago. And it was for a band called Gogol Berdello. And Google that if you don't know who they are. They're one of her favorite bands. I've seen them live before. And not my cup of tea, Really? You know, not not the kind of band... I don't even like going to concerts, if I'm being honest. If I do go to concerts... Uh, like, I'd ten times rather go to a stand-up comedy show than a concert any day of the week, even if I'm not a huge fan of the, the stand-up. But concerts, like, when I go, I prefer a really chill concert where I can be relaxed and, like, sit in the lawn and lay on, like, a blanket and, you know, do whatever concert goers do when they're out in the lawn... Um, kind of like, I went to go see Sublime and 311, like, probably six or seven years ago now, and that was a really fun concert. I, like, I laid down in the, the lawn at the Verizon Wireless Amphitheater, I don't even know if that's what it's called anymore, um, went and laid in the lawn, it was really relaxing, it's like reggae, chill music-ish, and I was with a bunch of friends, so it was a good time. This kind of concert was, everybody was packed into this uh, venue here in St. Louis called the Pageant, and it was just, I was up there right near the front watching the guys sing with Melissa, and she likes being in the thick of it, jumping around, getting elbowed and poked and, uh, groped and all of that. I don't, I don't understand why, she doesn't like getting groped. Okay, I, I like getting groped. So, she likes being jumping up and down, and she's still sore because she was catching some bows from some overly aggressive people, but that's not my my cup of tea, you know. I don't I don't like that. Can you explain? Like I know that she loves it, but if you guys are into that too, like the moshing thing, explain why you like that. Like, is it just the invi- the the feeling, the emotion of it that like everybody's so into it together that you're feeding off each other's energy? I can understand that. Like that makes sense. It's just not my my bag. Um, but anyway, this band is a gypsy punk band, which I didn't know was a genre until she told me about it. But it's basically like. It is really catchy music. Like I would have, I would enjoy the music more if I was not in the the thick of it, jumping around, getting other people's sweat on me. Uh, if I was just able to sit in the back and watch them do it, because there's like forty people on stage at once, all playing like eccentric instruments, and uh, th- they send members of the band out in the middle of the uh, show to mingle with the crowd and and pickpocket them as they see fit, because they are a gypsy band. So, you know, they got to make their money somehow. Uh, it was mostly fun. It was it was a good good time. It's just, I man, being in those big crowds, jumping around with people stresses me out if I'm there for too long. I can handle it for, like, an hour, hour and a half, but after a while it's like, oh, my God, I'm starting to feel claustrophobic in here with all these people that I don't know, like, pushing me to the front. And then there's always that, like, overly aggressive asshole next to you who, like, tries to move his shoulder in front of your shoulder and then, like, wedge you out, which is... It's like I was vying with one guy for placement at the concert. And, like, I'm not even, like, Melissa's the big fan of the band. I'm not even a big fan of the band. But I was trying to get closer to the band 
Not even to be like, oh, yeah, I'm loving it, just just out of spite for this asshole who kept trying to, like, deftly put elbows in my side and move me out of the way. So, yeah, that still a good time. So, uh, happy birthday to Melissa. All she wants for her birthday is for you guys to watch our Fallout Let's Play, uh, which she has been doing excellent on. Um, you know, I still don't fully understand what's going on with Fallout and the game, but she's doing a good job of explaining it, and we're having a fun time playing it. Um, I could see myself liking this game. It's just, it seems so complicated, you know? Like, to, to even get into it, it seems like there's a learning curve. It seems like it'd be a hard game to just pick up not knowing anything about it and be successful. Like, maybe this one less so than the other ones, because what she's explained to me is that they got rid of the skills system, and so I guess it's a little easier to gauge what you want to upgrade. If that, if, is that right? She can't even hear me. Never mind. So, yeah, maybe that would make it easier. Maybe not. Um, I haven't heard anybody say anything bad about Fallout 4 yet. Everybody seems to be loving it. Uh, I've heard some bad things about Black Ops 3. Um, the only big complaint I have with it is, uh, well, I guess a couple. The biggest one is that the new zombie map is super, super cool, but Jesus fuck, do they have to make every like me kyle and melissa were playing last night and it was the first time that on the new map we actually got to pack a punch and got a gun pack a punched and it was the first time we got all the rituals done and all that shit done and we we're like all right round 11 now we can begin the fun part of zombies because up until now it's just been like homework like all right go do this ritual run back over here oh turn into the beast oh no i missed the last switch now you got to spend your beast to go turn that switch on so that we can buy this perk and then run over here and oh no the monster show it's just like it's not that fun until you get you know honestly like an hour and a half into it like you have to put an hour and a half of work in before you can start enjoying it and then god forbid that as soon as you get the Pack-A-Punch rune open and you can get a couple good kiting spots, you die. Because then it's like, alright, cool. So I just played an hour and a half to get six minutes of the fun time, and now I have to go through that hour and a half again just to get back to square one where I can start enjoying it a lot. Like, it's it's a fun map, it's cool, but I'm so fucking tired of zombie developers doing this shit where they feel like they have to make every single step of every zombie map a riddle or a puzzle or some horse shit like that. I would gladly pay 15 or $20 for a uh, straight-to-the-fun pass that I could use in zombies, where it's like, oh, as soon as you start on that new map, it gives you an option, where it's like, hey, uh, hold X to immediately jump to round you know, 5 or whatever, and all the rituals will be done and pack-a-punch will be open. Like, it could, to make it challenging, it could still put you on round five with your pistol, but it would at least make it so that you could go straight to the potential fun time. You wouldn't have to, you know, lolly fuck around and, and hope for the best after spending hours and hours basically, like I said, studying and doing homework online, figuring out how to get to the fun part. It's just, that's really fucking aggravating. I hope that they, at least for the next zombie map they release, I hope that they make it a little simpler. Um... Or at the, I like the idea of the uh, the puzzles and the Easter eggs, but don't make that integral to having fun. Like, don't make it so you have to go through all that shit to get Pack-A-Punch. Make it so you have to go through all that shit to get, like, a really long cutscene of the story. Or you have to go through all that shit to get some kind of, you know, crazy good perk that makes the game easier once you have it, but it's not integral. Or an extra special weapon that makes the game more fun. Like, the Cthulhu one, I haven't even used yet. The new Cthulhu weapon is, like, a, a squid, and you shoot it, and it makes, like, a purple gravity a black hole, I guess, and it sucks the zombies in. Looks really neat, but I haven't got it yet because, from what I can tell, it's going to be another fucking ordeal to go through. But, yeah, other than that, the only complaint, uh, no more with zombies. Uh, I am glad they brought Dare Ice back, but the other complaint is with multiplayer. I don't like the... The fucking, um, the little three people standing in a, uh, uh, champion circle or whatever at the end of it, and they say little smarmy things to you. I don't like that at all. Uh, mainly because I, mainly, well, because I, I'm not winning. I'm playing like shit 99% of the time. I'm just not very good at COD anymore, and so I'm tired of seeing other people's, uh, avatars looking at me like, hey, eat shit, you dick. Like, you suck. Uh, you know, get raped, or whatever, whatever they say, um, 
Anywho, yeah, that's all I have to say about the video games. So, real quick before I jump into the questions, I got one more read for the advertiser Vapo Labs. So, let's get into this. And once again, guys, like this is my first sponsor for real on the show. So please check them out. Uh, it would reflect really well on me. And if you do enjoy e-cigs, which I do a lot. Um, then, yeah, I highly recommend them. Very quality juice and uh, very easy to work with. And I don't like the new, like, reputation that a lot of the Vapo people are getting, like, uh, people who use these things. Like, as long as you're not walking around in public, like, being one of those assholes who's blowing gigantic clouds of of vapor around, like, the inside, uh, then it doesn't matter. Like, if you just do it in your own home or outside like someone would with a cigarette like you're fine but don't be an asshole and ruin it for the rest of us by walking around like it's just water vapor i'm gonna blow a cloud uh big enough that if you condensed it it could fill an eight ounce juice glass directly into the air at tgi fridays like no fuck you you're you look like a real asshole and you're making the rest of us look bad so don't do that uh you know just just use it like a polite human being anyway vapor labs uh did walter white settle for just one million dollars, did Hitler settle for just five million Jews? Never. Jesus Christ, Vapor Labs. That's a. That's a <laughs> I, I I didn't read this beforehand, but man, that's that's harsh. Uh, <laughs> did Hitler settle for just five million Jews? Never. Then why would you settle for a shitty gas station e-juice? You shouldn't. Introducing Vapo Labs, a retro futuristic brand that has a knack for quality. Let me tell you, this is the most delicious juice I have ever tasted. Try the Rad Nanner with 30 radioactive bananas stuffed into each bottle. This banana cream pie is sure to make your taste buds tingle, all with a sweet graham cracker crust. Or the Key Lime Cloud, that's the one that I actually have. I mixed half Key Lime Cloud and half Nuka Crunch in my thing right now, and I like it a lot. Um, Key Lime Cloud, a creamy base with limes and drizzle of honey. This smooth mel- mealy- melody is probably what I meant. This smooth melody of flavors is by far my favorite. No matter what flavor you decide on, don't forget about juice rewards. Just buy a few bottles and then get one free. It's that easy. Uh, so go ahead and pick up a bottle of e-juice from the only company that will give you free stuff. Vapo Labs, science, B asterisk, plus sign, cent sign pound, exclamation point. So, uh, please use responsibly. You must be 18 years or older to purchase this product. California Proposition 69. This product contains 60. Uh, don't forget, use the code MURKA25. That's M-U-R-K-A-2, the number 2, 5, the number 5, for 25% off your first order only at vapolabs.com. Check their link below. Um, Jesus Christ. I should have read this before. I know I'm glad I didn't read this beforehand because that's that's a really awful, tasteless joke. Vapo Labs, I love it. That's great. Uh, how you compare Hitler not settling for five million Jews to vaping people not settling for shitty gas station e juice? It's a very apt analogy. Very uh, definitely, definitely a good comparison. So, um, Jesus Christ, that's great. Um, see, I told you there was a reason that I advertised with these guys. I knew there were going to be some funny fucks. Uh, oh, last current events thing before I jump into the question. So there's a, uh, they're shooting an explosions in Paris right now as I'm doing this. Um, I'm trying to see what's going on. I, I've, it's breaking right now, so I can't possibly know all the details when this comes out. Um, in the next week or so, people will probably come back and be like, you dumb fuck, this is incorrect, but this is what is breaking right now. Um, looks like in Paris right now, uh, at least 60 people are dead. Um, they had 100 hostages, uh, I guess it, from a concert hall or a theater. Um, yeah, it says there's a hostage situation in a theater going on right now. Uh, the terrorists were very calm. They reloaded three or four times just murdering people. Um, uh, nobody knows 100% who is responsible for it yet. Uh, I saw one of these live update things that said the, the, what is it, the Islamic State or something was approving of it or, like, saying, like, oh, good for them. I don't, I think the Islamic State isn't like, oh, all the Islam countries, like, it was, uh, Islamic countries, not Islam countries, I sound like an uneducated tart, uh, but I think that's just another group, like, ISIS, or maybe that is ISIS, um, Islamic State, Aths, I don't know, I don't know what the other ones are, so let's see what else is going on here, there's 60 hostages remaining in the 
Bataclan Theater. I guess I guess almost 50 to 60 people are dead right now. So what is what's going to be the ramification here? Like when it does come out, who's responsible? And uh, we can pretend that we don't know who's responsible right now, but we do. It's going to be uh, something, an organization very similar to ISIS or ISIS itself. Like, uh, very sincerely doubt that a bunch of, you know, Christians pissed off about Starbucks holiday cups are out there, you know, blowing up theaters and killing people. Uh, what are they going to do? Like, what's going to be the ramification there? I know that uh, I believe France, similar to Germany, has taken in quite a few of those refugees. And even if all those refugees have nothing at all to do with this, it's still going to really ruin relations between the natives of Paris and France and those people who are seeking refuge from the war-torn area in Syria. Like, it's going to... Something like this seems like it's only going to serve to really fuck up relations between the native uh, French there and the new coming immigrants. Like, this, it just seems like this is going to go very poorly. You know, like, this is going to drive a big wedge between those groups. If anything, you'll probably see in the next couple of weeks, like, either even more of these attacks uh, being blamed on immigrants. And, and, hey, I don't know, maybe uh, ISIS did sneak some, some people in, just like they said they would. Uh, but more than likely, they were already there, or they found a way in through other means, I would think. But... Yeah, it's really fucked, because then you might see, like, oh, you know, a uh, Muslim guy beat to death on Paris Street by a group of nationalists in Paris who are like, hey, get the fuck out of here, you know, this isn't your country, you're the reason that we had that bomb, uh, when really they're just killing someone who had nothing to do with it. So there's there's no way for this to evolve into anything that's not terrible. Like, yeah, yep, it just came up, death, clo- t- death toll has climbed to 46... Uh, I guess explosions are going off as well. This this looks like a real orchestrated thing that's going on. So this is not, uh, I don't know, this doesn't look like a couple, you know, extremists doing it the best they can by themselves. This looks like this must be some kind of organization behind him that was capable of equipping, outfitting, uh, making, uh, distributing explosives, weapons, everything like that. So this has got to be an organization similar to ISIS, if not ISIS itself. Like, that's... You know, maybe it'll come out that I'm totally wrong about all this, but that's my my hunch. Uh, anyway, this is depressing. I'm going to keep tabs on that, but I'm also going to check out some of the questions you guys have sent me for this week. All right. So, da 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 da. Glorious Führer. Jesus Christ. Uh, so the, he asks, <laughs> and his profile picture is a picture of Hitler. So you know this will be a very tactful, uh, well-asked and thought-out question, you know. Uh, hey, Taylor, I know this is a sensitive topic, but I wanted an update on your thoughts. I was re-watching your 9-11 video from three years ago where you mentioned the media parading it around for equal parts laziness and scare tactics to keep people complacent uh, with the TSA and whatnot. You brought up how often we use 9-11 as an excuse for our actions in the Middle East despite the death toll of the Middle East civilian Despite the death toll of Middle East civilians far exceeding those of 9-11, where you mentioned the terrorists being an extreme minority, uh, which is true, uh, when the rise in terrorist groups like ISIS and the other way, the left is true. Hold on, I'm trying. With the rise of terrorist groups like ISIS and the way the left is treating Islam during the refugee crisis, uh, allowing Sharia-controlled zones in the UK, for example, how have your opinions on Islam and our actions overseas changed? Um... I don't know, I still, I don't think that my opinion on Islam has changed. Like, it was the same thing back then, where it's like, okay, um, it's just more incorrect to say it now. Like, back then, you could say, uh, and this is just in the last few years, honestly, where a few years ago, you could say, like, yeah, um, there are, you know, the overwhelming majority of Muslims are good people. They just want to live their lives and be left alone like everybody else, but there is a percentage of of extremists out there who are causing shit and ruining things and making a bad name for all the rest of the people who just want to be left alone uh, now if you say that like it's like the left will come at you with you know a pitchfork and be like that's not true you're being racist by not uh you know accepting islam and it's only like a tiny percentage of them and and also uh christians do the same thing and it's like okay like i understand where you're coming from i agree with you it's only a very minuscule itty bitty percent 
but to pretend that that itty bitty teeny weeny percent isn't a bigger percent than for other religions at this moment in time like yeah you can talk about the crusades and go back in time and talk about that but like in today in this zeitgeist this day and age islam does have more dangerous extremists than other religions like that's not the fault of those people who are innocent obviously but it is just kind of indisputable at this point like uh they'll bring up like oh uh wasn't the khmer rouge that genocide maybe that was muslims as well i think that was christians though where they'll bring that up and it's like yeah that's true i'm not defending another religion by you know saying something less than favorable about this one but uh yeah, it's just it seems like a really desperate attempt to shy away from uncomfortable truths that people don't like to hear, um, where they just want to you know put their fingers in their ears and be like la 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 you know don't say that you know that's that's racist that's racist no it's not Islam isn't a race it's a it's a religion there are white Islam I'm sorry white Islams look at look at me uh, there are white Muslims there there even uh, this guy named Jihad John who they think they killed in the Middle East now as a member of ISIS this fucking prick white dude joined isis after growing up in the uk and was like on the internet i guess beheading people like how much of a piece of shit do you have that guy's the worst of all like he came from a country where he had every opportunity to learn about this shit ahead of time to figure out from outside that bubble of brainwashing that it's all horseshit and he still fell for it and went into it like how much of a real what a scumbag you know like at the very least if you see someone who grew up like in the clutches of an organization like ISIS, you can be like, okay, so they are very clearly brainwashed into thinking that, you know, their God wants them to kill everyone who's not like them. And that if he does, he'll, you know, get X, Y, and Z rewards. It's just like, you can understand it's still not excusable, obviously, but it's less, I guess, less fucked up than someone seeing that from the outside and then deciding, yeah, that's the organization for me. Um, yeah, so hopefully Jihad John is dead. Fuck that guy. But, I don't know. The whole Islam thing, like, it's controversial to talk about now at all. But, yeah, I think everyone agrees. It's only certain people who try and straw man your opinion. I think 99% of people agree, like, yeah, nobody thinks that all Muslims are violent. Nobody thinks that. Maybe a few uh, really shitty bigots here and there do, but no one I've ever talked to assumes that about every Muslim. That's ridiculous, and it seems like a straw man to paint anyone who would have anything unfavorable to say about their religion uh, as just an all-around bigot racist. So, um, yeah, that's that's that. Let's go on to another one. Maybe one that's funny, guys. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, all right. Hey, Taylor, my name's Julian from Australia. I'm a big fan of everything you do, and I'm a big fan of your sense of humor. So my question, I was walking, I was watching your video about depression last night and struck a chord with me. I find I don't have anything to be down about, but it just happens for some reason. Do you still have issues with that, or do you have any advice for those uh, thought that you use, or, or do you have any advice for these thoughts that you used to have, I guess is what you're trying to say. Uh, thank you for reading my message. So, yeah, I think everybody gets like that sometimes. Like, there's... I think there is a, a tendency for people to have naturally sad times in their life and ascribe that to being depressed when really it's like, well, what do you want? Like, it's it's easier to say this now when I'm not in a feeling of depression, but, like, you, you can't expect to be happy all the time. Like, there's going to be shitty little moments that you have to deal with. There's going to be stuff that you don't like, you know? That's just, that is life. Like, every, you know, two-day spree where you feel shitty isn't about a depression that's just the way humans are we go through emotional cycles so um i don't know the way that helps me the most is to try and put everything in perspective like if i'm really depressed about something i'll try and make myself see that like you know what in the grand scheme of things this isn't uh the end-all be-all of what me makes me me you know it's it's not the a life ending thing like I, I try and put myself like in my head at least like a year or five years out and then I think about the problem that I'm having, and I'm like, in five years, will I even be able to pinpoint this? And that helps sometimes. So, yeah, sorry I can't help more. Um, that's that's what I think. Uh, am I an asshole for the show? So, 
Homeroom just started, and I bought a bagel. The bell rang, so I got up to bring the bagel. To, so I got up to bring my bagel to class. One of my friends came up to the table to prank my friend. He was going to do the fake sneeze prank. The fuck is the fake sneeze prank? Like he just go up to someone and go at you, and they go bless you, and you go ha ha! It wasn't even real, and then you, you run away laughing. Like what the fuck is the fake sneeze prank? Um, he comes up to our table and throws his hand forward to get the water on my fr Oh, okay, I remember that. Where you sneeze and you flick the water on someone's, like, back of their neck. And then they're like, hey, you just sneezed. And you're like, oh, no, you've been bamboozled. It was only water. Um, so he comes up to our table and throws his hand forward to get the water on my friend. But in the process, he knocks all my food out of my hand and just stands there and laughs at me. If he had apologized or even better bought me a replacement bagel, I wouldn't have done what I do next. But he just kept laughing at me. Uh, so I picked up the bagel that had cream cheese on it and wiped it on his sleeve. Then he acts like he's so surprised that I ruined someone's meal and they're angry about it. And he just starts yelling, what's wrong with you, man? After, after he started saying that, I told him to go fuck himself and walk to class. Am I an asshole? Um, no, he should have apologized for knocking the food out of here. See, I thought wiping it on the sleeve is a bit douchier than wiping it on his face. You can just go rinse your face off. Who knows if that cream cheese is going to come out of his, his sleeve. It probably will. It's just fucking cream cheese. There are a lot of messy bagel eaters out there. Wouldn't be as popular of a topping if it was ruining everything it got on. So, yeah, you're not an asshole. It's, it's a little douchey, but, I mean, he started it. He should have at least said, oh, shit, I'm sorry, man. Like, that's an accident. And this also depends on the window of time that he was laughing, you know. If he knocked it out of your hand and he went, ha, ha, ha. And then you're just like, oh, fuck you! And then just smeared it all over his sleeve. Then it's like, all right, you, you moved too quickly there. You should have, you know, you should have sat back for a second, waited five, six seconds, see if he was going to finish his laugh and apologize and buy you a new bagel. But if this was like a minute later and you're still just seething at the thought of him ruining your bagel, and then you did it, then he should have apologized and bought you a new bagel. It's a fucking bagel. It's not that expensive. And if he actually ruined your, your breakfast or lunch or whatever, then yeah. Yeah, you're not an asshole. I think it's pretty funny. I'd, I'd like to see that. All right. Uh, da, da, da. Hey, Taylor, I'm a 16-year-old homeschooler. Being homeschooled, I don't have many opportunities to socialize. I used to be friends with a bunch of people that I used to go to school with, but after switching, I've lost touch with all of them. After a long depression and overeating, I was weighing in at close to 200 pounds. I'm 5'6", and unfortunately done growing. Uh, that's rough, buddy. Uh, now I've started cycling, and I'm down to 140. Good for you. I need to lose about 10 more pounds to be in the top cycling shape, and I'll be able to get on the team. Well, you're really fucking close, dude. Real close. Uh, I'm actually racing tomorrow and hoping that I can start catching the eyes of some sponsors. Anyway, I'm really close to my goal, but I'm losing motivation to achieve it. I'm working out two, three hours a day, studying the rest, and living off about 1,500 calories. Uh, on top of this, my parents caught me enjoying herb and took away my vaporizer and bud. Oh, that sucks. They should at least let you unwind from your cycling training with a little bit of pot, right? You know, it helps your, tell them that it helps you, helps you get limber, helps your soreness. Uh, now they won't let me hang out with any of the few friends slash girls that I've been talking to. I feel like the only way I'm going to be able to socialize now is through cycling, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it on one of those teams even as close as I am. I feel really shitty, but it's even worse because I feel like I don't deserve to feel shitty. My parents bought me a BMW, a $3,000 bike, and my college is already paid for. Jesus Christ. What kind of BMW? Like, that's a $3,000 bike? Sounds like you've got it made in the shade, my friend. Like, if not being able to smoke pot is the worst of that, then... I guess it's not the pot that you're pissed off about. It's the, the punishment because of the pot. Of like, oh, now you can't hang out with your friends. And you're like, oh, but I want to hang out with my friends. How am I supposed to show off this BMW if I can't go to, you know, Timmy's house? Um, college is paid for. So at the very least, you'll make some friends there, man. Like, just, you know, keep those those eyes on the prize of college. And, you know, you won't, if you're, even if you're lonely for a bit while you're grounded from, for pot and cycling is your only outlet, you'll be, you'll be good to go once you're in college. I don't know how, or 16 year old, so two years. Um, I really have an easy life, but it's not all it's cracked out to be. I thought once I had lost this much weight and had gotten a nice car that life would be easy mode, but it's not. I don't have any friends, and it's not uncommon for me to go days without any conversation. Uh, how would you recommend overcoming this loneliness and depression? Um, yeah, so it seems like all this comes from you not being able to socialize with friends and feeling really isolated, and it seems like the reason for that is that you got grounded because of pot. 
you know. So aside from not smoking pot anymore, to not repeat that incident, at least not until you go to college, like just hold off on the weed, buddy. Um, talk to your parents about it, because they seem to be holding the reins right now, saying that you can't go socialize. So just go explain to them, like, hey, I'm feeling really, really down and depressed. Um, here's my situation. Like, I feel like this whole homeschooling thing has really limited my social ability, uh, or at least my, my, my social means to get out there and meet people. And so, you know, I understand if you need me to be home by a certain time for curfew or something, but it would just really mean a lot if I could go out and start socializing again. Um, I'm feeling really, really lonely and I need some, some communication with people in my age group. And I'm sure your parents will be fine with that, dude. Like, I don't know your parents, but if you break it down for them like that, um, I can't imagine them just being like, no, fuck you, be sad. That'll teach you to smoke the devil's lettuce. Like, it's just, I don't know. But then I don't know your parents, so you have to take that with a grain of salt. But at the very least, you're closing in on college, and as long as your parents aren't like hyper-Christian anti-pot people, I can't imagine that they'll just keep you cooped up because of, you know, one or two times catching you smoking the herb, because it's just not that big of a deal. Um... Especially if you're losing so much weight right now that it's like, well, holy shit, like, I'm, I've shown that it's not making me lazy. I'm losing a fuck ton of weight, mom and dad. Uh, so yeah, just go into it the best you can with a mature attitude, and it, it should turn out alright. Um, hey, Murka, am I an asshole? I'm 18, and I'm friends with this girl who has a boyfriend. We've been getting closer lately, and I've been going over to her house, and we've been Skyping and talking a lot. Uh-oh! Hoo-hoo! We've also been Snapchatting and sending each other Snapchats that would be considered inappropriate considering she's in a relationship. It's not nudes or stuff like that. She does. She still seems devoted to her boyfriend, but I can't help but feel like I'm the asshole. I also don't know her boyfriend at all, so am I an asshole? Um. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're being a bit of an asshole. Yeah, you should not be... Um, you don't know the guy at all, but, like, think about it this, like, if, like, she's more of an asshole because she's, like, the middleman here where she knows her boyfriend, and so she has to go around every day with her boyfriend knowing the whole time that she's going to be going home later and Skyping or Snapchatting you things that he would be really pissed if he found out about. So she's living the double life, so she's, like, she's got you beat on the asshole scale. But that doesn't completely absolve you, you know? Um, I've heard guys... Uh, lots of guys be like, oh, yeah, you know, I hooked up with this girl. Turns out she had a boyfriend. And it's like, okay, well, if you didn't know about the boyfriend beforehand, then that's more excusable because how are you supposed to read that if nobody tells you? Like, you can't know. But if they tell you they have a boyfriend and then you, like, make it their mission to sleep with them anyway, um, that's really douchey. You're sabotaging a relationship and you should just get out of there. Like, fuck you. Um, like, that you're somewhere in the middle there since you haven't done anything to totally ruin it, but at the same time, if this dude did find out that you were Snapchatting and texting and being inappropriate with his girlfriend, uh, that would probably be a relationship ruiner. Like, it would for me at least, and it would for the majority of people. So, even though you guys haven't fucked or done anything physical yet, um, don't think that that's not far off, because that's going to end up happening, and... If you have any sort of conscience at all, then you're going to feel like real shit afterwards. So, dude, stop doing this. Um, tell her that you're not interested, you feel bad, uh, she's in a relationship, and it's not fair to her boyfriend for you to be doing this. And, uh, you know, just just end it right there. If she actually likes you, she'll end up breaking up with her boyfriend and contacting you again very soon. I guarantee it. So just, you know, th th there's no way for this to go but poorly. So just, yeah, g get out of there, man. And so, yeah, I'd say on the scale of 1 to 10, you're being like a, a 6 of an asshole. All right. Uh, hey, Taylor, I've really been enjoying your podcast. You should be proud of yourself for accomplishing so much in only a month. Uh, well, thank you. I don't think that I have. Um, holy shit, I, my, my messages, when I click read more, oh, this is a lot of shit. Um, am I an asshole? I've been having issues with my brother and his wife. I'll try to keep this as short as possible. Well, mission failed, sir. Um... This story starts with my grandma, who is my hero, role model, and best friend, passing away from cancer back in April. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, the funeral was planned to be the first weekend after he passed... Oh, grandfather. Okay. The funeral was planned to be the first weekend after he passed away, and it just so happened that the funeral landed on the same day as my sister-in-law's birthday. 
Uh, my grandma, who was obviously devastated and going through hell, still made an effort to wish her a happy birthday, as did I and a few other people in the family. However, a, a few forgot because obviously this woman's 38th fucking birthday isn't as important as laying the head of our family down to rest. Well, long story short, she cut off contact with the entire family because she felt so hurt by us not doing enough for her birthday. Oh, are you fuck? What a bitch. What? It, good lord. Like, you could at least... Okay, I'll continue. She blamed my grandma and said she always felt unwelcome in our family, which just isn't true at all. I've always gotten along really well with my brother, but he just stayed quiet and cut off contact too in order to keep her happy. But now, almost six months later, they're slowly trying to worm their way back into the family, mostly by, mostly by asking me to do favors for them or asking my parents to attend their kids' events. No effort at all to apologize or even talk to my grandma. So my question to you is this. Am I an asshole because I'm still fucking pissed about what took place? Like I said, I've always been close to my brother, who just, but he just dropped us immediately for his wife, and I have absolutely no interest in, in having... Have no, I absolutely have no interest in having her be a part of my life. The reason why I might be an asshole is because the rest of my family, even my grandma, are willing to just let this go and pretend it never happened, but I just can't. My grandpa meant so much to me, and he sh and she shat all over that because of her birthday. Should I just let this go and chalk it up to her not handling the situation well in order to get close to my brother again and hopefully bring the family closer together? My fear is that she's just going to do this shit again, and I'd rather just be done with her after what she did. Um... Well, you can't completely separate yourself from her because you don't want to ruin your relationship with your brother. And if you are bitchy to her, she is going to poison him against you in some way or another. She will. You may not think it's possible, but she'll find a way. And that'll kind of mess up your relationship with your brother. So you got to get over it to an extent. But don't ever be too buddy-buddy with her at all. Because if she isn't even apologizing for this, which it is narcissistic as fuck for a family that you've married into, a, a, I assume recently, they have the head of their family die, and you just don't give a shit. You're just, oh, but it's my 38th birthday. It's not like you're 12 years old and you don't understand the gravity of the situation. You're 38. Jesus Christ. Like, you'd think you wouldn't want to celebrate birthdays that much anymore, closing in on 40. Like, what the fuck? Um, yeah, that's nonsense. Uh, you gotta be nice to her, or at least, not nice, you have to be accepting of her so you can stay close to your brother um but definitely don't trust her or do any favors for her or anything like that because this will happen again sooner or later because to not even apologize about something that big shows a profound lack of respect for you and your family okay da, da, da. jesus christ so many questions i know i'm not gonna be able to get to them all um hey taylor love the podcast i have a cliche girl question uh, I've been interested in this girl from college for a number of months now. I've talked to this girl a number of times, once or twice, for pretty in-depth conversation during which she never showed any sign of boredom. Uh, she seems pretty shy and is distant with most people, so it's kind of hit and miss every time I try and strike up a conversation with her. Next semester, she'll be away from the college, away from the college for other circumstances. I won't see her again till the next academic year. My slow and steady approach isn't going as quickly as I had hoped, and I only have a few weeks left in the current semester. Until recently, I was a real fat fuck, so I didn't have that much confidence around girls. I've never asked one out when I was sober. Should I bite the bullet at the end of the semester, seeing as I won't be, be around her for eight months, or should I wait and build up my confidence and physique for round two next year? Uh, thanks for any advice. Oof. God damn, guys, you, <laughs> so many of you put your name down and then right after put anonymous. Like, just don't put the name. Then I can't accidentally read it. Um, hmm. I honestly, this, that's rough. So let me see. For a number of months now, so you've talked to her, I guess, once or twice for pretty in-depth conversations. Um, huh. I don't know. Let me ask Melissa. You weren't paying attention? Not at all? Jesus fucking Christ, Melissa. Alright, so this dude, he's been uh, interested in this girl at his college for a while now. He's talked to her a couple times, uh, a number of times, he says. Uh, once or twice, pretty in-depth conversations. Um, says she seems shy and that she's going to have to leave the college soon uh, until next semester. And he doesn't know if he wants to use this opportunity um, to, you know, talk to her, maybe ask her out, get with her, and or if he should wait until eight months from now 
when she comes back for next semester, I guess. Um, is it eight months? Yeah, he won't be around for eight months. Uh, or if he should wait till then. So. Yeah, don't wait. <laughs> don't wait. Ask, ask to hang out or do something. Because if you wait, it's going to be like, oh, well, that person didn't really care to do anything with me or hang out or whatever until I came back to school. Just be like, hey, we should go do something sometime. But waiting is the worst. Putting it on ice is not not good. <laughs> yeah, she's going to assume you're like a friendly acquaintance, not someone who's actually interested in her uh, relationship-wise or just sexually. I don't know what angle you're going for, but... I agree. I think you should just bite the bullet and go for it right now. And, you know, you said you, you must be more confident than you were before. You said, I'm not a fat fuck anymore. So, yeah, that's that's great that you, you lost some weight. You're in better shape. Go for it. Um, what should he ask her to do, Liz? Just, I don't know. Depends on how in-depth your conversations have been. Because if you've had, you know, talks about your personal life, just be like, hey, we should go get coffee sometime or get a drink or just to hang out and have more conversations. Not necessarily a date, but coffee dates and drink dates are pretty low pressure, I think. Yeah. What, any activity you think he should take her to? Not until you know what she likes to do. Yeah, I would think, I would hope that he knows what she likes to do. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't ask her to a movie or offer to take her to dinner. Um, that'll, seems like that'll be a little too much and be uncomfortable and you're spending way too much money for nothing. And she'll probably also feel pressure to like put out or give you more attention than she actually wants to. Just ask her, like Melissa said, for coffee or a beer or whatever. And I mean, even then you're in a social environment. So if it does start to go poorly, you can kind of mingle your way out of there without it going really shitty and being uncomfortable, like sitting at a restaurant where it conversation dies six minutes in and then you have to sit there and pretend to be more interested in the menu than you really are for a while and then uh keep the waiter around after he lists off specials like oh which one would you really recommend tell us both keep us from feeling more awkward but yeah i definitely go for it yeah and coffee dates you can keep short you can be like oh let's i've got to do this at this time let's meet up real quick and have a cup of coffee and peace out when you're ready yeah Okay. Will you help me with one more list? Sure. All right. I'm trying to pick between a couple. Hmm. Yeah, we'll go with this one. So, from Anonymous. Acne. Never have hung out with a girl in high school. Uh, hey, Mirka, I'm 15 and a sophomore in high school. No driver's license. Well, I would hope not. You're 15. Uh, we'll have that by the summer. Over the summer, I got a mild case of acne, chin, cheeks, and somewhere on the lips and the space where the unibrow grows. I've had multiple people mention to me that I have acne. What a bunch of assholes. Uh, thanks, fucker. Like, I don't own any mirrors or I've never touched my face. <laughs> um... I don't actually touch my face. It only makes it worse. Uh, I use a cream and drink lots of water, by the way. So my questions are, how much does acne affect my social interaction with people, primarily girls? But I'd also like to know how much guys give a shit. From what I can tell, I get some banter from my friends, but I think that's about it. I have never hung out with a girl before. All the people I sit with always talk about it, and I feel left out because they all have these stories, and I have shit to say. I talk to them, but I can never seem to muster up the courage to ask for their numbers slash Snapchats or actually take the hint they're giving me. If I do, I feel like I can never text them because they will be with a friend, and I feel like that would be awkward. I'm not fat, ugly, or dressed shitty, by the way. Um, also, how do I get past my fear of texting girls and actually muster up the courage to specifically get their numbers? Uh, and is it a big deal in high school to even be trying to talk to girls? Anyway, thanks for the help if you do answer this. Um, yes, yeah, so don't get too stressed out about this, man. You're 15. I had acne when I was 15. Um, I don't even know if they still give this medicine out anymore. It's called Accutane. Uh, turns out that it really fucks your liver and kidneys and stuff. But on the bright side, my skin is beautiful now. Just top-notch <laughs> skin, isn't it? It's great. Yeah? Yeah, I have wonderful skin. 
Yeah, at, at the price of a few nosebleeds a year and a messed up kidney. So, you know, hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me, but uh, yeah, hopefully they don't even give that drug out anymore because it sucks being on it, but it does eradicate acne. Anyway, that's not helpful to you. Um, you're only 15, so don't get too ahead of yourself and think that you're, you know, losing your shit just because you're not talking to a ton of chicks yet. Um, I mean, Melissa's the girl, so I can ask how much does acne affect my social interaction with people? Like, Unfortunately, when you're a teenager, it affects it a lot because teenagers are uncomfortable with having acne. I had acne. I still have acne, and I'm in my 20s. It's something you're going to have to deal with possibly for the rest of your life. Um, it's not, no, well, let's not, let's not, let's not freak them out here. Like there is a huge difference between, you know, a 38 year old who gets a couple pimples now and then, and someone who's 15 with acne. Cause I know I used to have, if this guy's describing it, anything like I had it before I took that pill, I had some pretty rough acne when I was like 14. Yeah, and, I did. I did too. Yeah. I mean, I go so, through phases where I, I have it pretty bad. Yeah. Well, this, it's not going to be like this forever. So don't be freaked out. Um, so, yeah, it does. It's just because it's high school. People are really judgmental, and they will, you know, make comments about it. But if there's ever a time that it's socially accepted to have acne, it's high school and probably college. Like, it's not going to be the end-all, be-all. Uh, I had plenty of friends in high school and in college who had girlfriends and acne. Like, that's just the way she goes. Um, as far as guys, I don't think guys give a shit. I've never not hung out with a friend because they had acne or... Um, I've never even given a friend shit for having acne because it just seems kind of like a low blow and it's not even that funny. Um, but if they are giving you shit, that's just what guys do. Guys fuck with each other and you just got to roll with the punches. So, um, yeah, as, as far as not hang, hanging out with girls, uh, you're only 15, dude. Like you're, you don't even have your driver's license yet. Like how are you supposed to go hang out? Oh, my dad will pick us up at seven and take us to the mall. Then we can hang out awkwardly at Hot Topic and then get a pretzel. Like, <laughs> what are you going to do? Um, yeah, just as far as the Snapchat thing, I can't imagine how many mistakes I would have made in high school if I had Snapchat. <laughs> just stupid things. Like, think of how much, like, technically child porn there is out there on people's Snapchats. Yeah. Where they're just creating porn of themselves that's illegal and then texting it out there yep so they're proliferating child porn yep so don't do that that's don't do what that the law says yeah that is and if you do ever take dick pics don't put your face in it that's a rookie <laughs> mistake rookie rookie mistake yeah don't never. don't send don't send naked pictures as a teenager just i know i was, I was joking don't. you know yeah don't do that uh you know 18th birthday, though, go hog wild. You know, send it to your grandma. Um, just not until you're you're old enough. Um, yeah, I, I, I also want to warn you, like, you're saying, oh, all my friends talking about chicks, and I feel so left out. Uh, you're 15. I assume most of your friends are 14, 15, 16. Um, most of their stories are made up. If it seems too crazy to be real, it is too crazy to be real. They're all just as uncomfortable uh, or almost as uncomfortable as you are. They're just as insecure. They feel just as weird talking to chicks. Uh, that's just part of being that age. Like, nobody knows what's good or what's not good or the right approach. So, um, yeah, don't give too much credence to the stories they're telling because chances are they're heavily edited and uh, really made up. So, do you have something to say, Liz? Uh, for acne, just try more different things. A lot of it's hormonal, so you're not going to be able to control it that much. But just trying different things all the time, you might be able to find something that helps more than what you're doing currently. Yep. And as far as getting past your fear of texting girls, you just have to do it. Like, you, you just have like. Don't just go up to a chick and be like, hey, what's your number? Like, because then you seem like a cretin. But what you should do, like, come up with an activity that you know your friends and maybe a group of girls like to do. Uh, like, oh, hey, we're, we're going to go play Frisbee at the park or we're going to go, uh, you know, wear our virtual reality headsets at, at, you know, Tommy's house, whatever kids nowadays are doing. Um, just invite their group of friends 
with your group of friends to go do an activity. That way it's not as uncomfortable as saying, hey, you give me your number. Then it's more of like, a, hey, yeah, just uh, give me your details so I can text you when we're on the way. We can meet up. And then it's also the chance of like, okay, well, there's five guys here, four chicks here. You know, it gives me a chance to do some practice. And it's easier to talk to people in a group because you don't have to shoulder the entire burden of speaking the whole time. So uh, find a group of girls that mesh well or seem to mesh well like they would with your group of guy friends and think of an activity to not, not take them out and do. Like, don't go out and be like, oh, milady, let me buy this for you. Like, just go do something fun. Uh, that's what I did in high school, and it seemed to work fine. Like, everybody's more comfortable in a group. Um, yeah, that's – sorry, I can't give better advice than that. Like, that, that you just – being anxious about talking to chicks, you just have to do it. Because until you do it, you will remain anxious about it. And you want to get that monkey off your back as quickly as possible. Like, you don't want to go into college not knowing how to talk to girls. Um, you want to get that understood right now. What's the worst case scenario? Is that a conversation goes poorly? Boo hoo. Like, who fucking cares? Is there only one girl in your grade? No, you're not homeschooled, so it doesn't matter. Just go to school, talk to as many chicks as you can, carpet bomb approach. So what if a lot of it goes wrong? Something will go right. At the very least, you'll learn some lessons from it. So, um, yeah, I think that's the episode for this week. I got a ton of questions remaining. I'm doing the bonus episode that you get from being a Patreon this week. Um, I'll release that to you guys as... I'll, I'll give you the details through Patreon. Um, and I'll be answering a lot of these questions remaining in that uh, that episode. So... Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Please check out Vapo Labs, uh, great sponsor. Thank you very much for being my sponsor this week. And uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great week and you're doing well. Bye bye. <laughs>